Councilmember Jeffrey Darby and the Pledge of Allegiance by Councilmember Chris Smith. Please stand. Let us pray. Holy Father, we thank you for this day that you allowed us to see. We thank you, Lord God, for rest on last night. We pray, O oh Father God, for William Collins' family. We ask you, Lord God, to give them peace and comfort. We pray, Father God, for uh, Governor Edwin Edwards' family. I ask that you give them peace and comfort. Father, we pray for Roar Proctor. We ask you, Lord God, to heal his body, give him recovery day by day. We pray for his wife and his children. We ask you, Lord God, to keep them at peace of mind throughout the process. We thank you for those who have given. Lord, we thank you for the one who we present today for a life-saving award. We thank you, Father God, for his uh, giving of himself unselfishly. We thank you, Father God, for the opportunity to serve this community. We ask that you give us direction to do those things that bring glory and honor to your name. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 Join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mr. Montgomery. Here. Mr. Smith. Here. Mr. Irwin. Here. Mr. Darby. Here. Mr. Williams. Here. Mr. Free. Here. Mr. Maggio. Here. Council, in accordance with Louisiana <coughs> Open Meetings Laws and the adopted Bossier City Council meeting rules resolution, the City Council asks for order and decorum at our meetings. Please silence your cell phones. Anyone wishing to address the Council on any agenda item may approach and state their name and address for the record and shall be permitted three minutes to make their comments on the particular item that's up for discussion with up to four speakers per side. All other, other audience members are asked to please observe the meeting quietly, and if there is a need for audience members to hold a conversation or take a phone call, you are asked to please step out of the meeting. City Council appointed Sergeant at Arms have been instructed to maintain decorum and ask anyone in violation to step out of the meeting in order to maintain orderly conduct of the meeting. We'll approve the minutes. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Council, please cast your yes, vote. Yes, sir. Audience. Huh? Audience. Which one? Oh. Does, he, does the audience have anything about uh, the agenda today that they'd like to speak on? The minutes. Okay. Please, Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Council, there are no additions to the agenda, so we'll just need a motion to approve it. I get a motion to approve today's agenda. So moved. Second. Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Ceremonial matters. Fire Department Life Saving Award. Mr. Zagone, Mayor Chandler. Council, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, on June 30th, uh, Easton Dempsey was found at the bottom of the pool. That's little Easton over there uh, and his mom and dad. These three trained individuals we're talking about today uh, began life-saving CPR. Due to their quick response and excellent skills, um, they for sure helped save the life of, of young Easton. One of them is uh, Sarah Estes. One is Lisa Keys, and one is Josh Ashby. Josh is a paramedic on the fire department with us. Uh, Sarah is a nurse practitioner, and Lisa is a RN with the uh, Bossier Parish school, uh, school system. The thing about it is, I, I can't remember the exact year. I was trying to look it up, but shortly after I became fire chief in 2011, we had uh, three uh, pediatric drownings in one year um, and we didn't get any of those back unfortunately 
but we had no bystander CPR in any of those. And I have the awards for these. They were on scene. They started the initial CPR, I think five rounds of CPR, and got a pulse back and started rescue breathing. And then we had uh, Engine 9, Trauma 6, and Car 33 show up. And I, I do want to just mention them. You had Captain Griffin, uh, Joey Brickner, Dylan Elliott on Engine 9. The paramedic on Trauma 6 was Chad Hart, and the EMT was John Fondren. And Car 33 was EMS Supervisor Jimmy McGee that all showed up and helped out. I think Josh even rode to the hospital with the unit. But the outcome was excellent. Right there, you can see. And, uh, <laughs> he was too shy to shake my hand a while ago. I tried to <laughs> him. But uh, I'd like at this time to ask uh, the mayor if he'd like to say something and uh, maybe the family. Well, I, I want to uh, thank y'all. I mean, it's all been in the news. And I thought it was great that the kid was saved and in good health and everything. And in doing that, I want to present y'all with a challenge coin for all you've, all you've done. I'm Easton's father, and, um, you know, you just never know how blessed you are to be in a community until... I, <laughs> I think that was a thank you. You never know how blessed you are to be in a community until something like this happens. Um, and for my wife and I, um, we'll never be able to repay y'all for what y'all did for us that day. Um, but we'll also never be able to repay the community of Bozier and, and so many other people um, that gave their support and their prayers. Um, you know, it's our hope that this doesn't happen to any more little ones, but uh, we want to do everything we can, obviously, to raise awareness about pool safety and, and the importance of CPR and things like that, too. So you can't talk to them. <laughs> but again, we appreciate, uh, we appreciate y'all having us. We appreciate y'all giving them the awards. They uh, absolutely deserve it. Uh, so thank y'all. We love y'all. Appreciate it. Tell them thank you. Say thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> All right, so this is for Sarah. Uh, <clears throat> all three of these are the Citizen Life Saving Award. It's one of the highest honors the, uh, the fire service can present as a, a Citizen's Life Saving Award. So. And Miss Lisa. Thank you. Thank you all once again for everything y'all did. I really appreciate it.
adopt a resolution honoring the service and sacrifice of grocery store workers during the COVID-19 crisis. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Second. Council, please catch no, sir. Oh. No comments from the audience. I'm sorry. Any comments from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Is there anyone here from the grocery store industry? I know we send out several invites. Anybody? Come on. We ask that you come on up. Does council have certificates <laughs> that they would like to present? <laughs> <laughs> You're not alone. <laughs> I'm going to read the resolution. Get to it. Whereas during our nation's fight against COVID-19, grocery store employees put themselves in harm's way to perform the ver variety of essential tasks necessary to keep food and other nece ne necessary items available to the citizens of Bossier City. And whereas these essential frontline workers kept the supply of food and other necessities available to citizens of Bossier City by putting their health and safety on the line to serve this community. And whereas grocery store employees have answered the call and carried out their critical mission of ensuring food and other necessities are available to feed our families during the COVID-19 crisis. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the City Council of Bossier City, Louisiana, in regu regular session convened, does hereby recognize and applaud the contributions of grocery store workers during the COVID-19 appreciates that grocery store workers answered the call to serve their community during these unprecedented times, commends the grocery store workers who risk their own health and safety as well as the health and safety of their loved ones to continue their work during the COVID-19 pandemic, recognizes that some grocery store workers have been lost to COVID-19 as a result of their service and offers their loved ones our sincerest condo condolences recognizes the Im immense debt of gratitude we owe grocery store workers for minimizing the in inevitable disruption to Bossier City citizens' daily lives and playing a critical role in protecting the health and safety of this community. The above and foregoing resolution was read in full and open and legal session convened on a motion by Mr. Darby and a second by Mr. Smith and adopted on the 20th day of July, 2021. My name is James McKenzie. I'm the club manager at Sam's Club. Um, thank y'all for this award. We appreciate it very much. My name is Jay Holmes. I'm the district manager for Brookshire's in the Shreveport Bossier area. I uh, want to first show appreciation for the council for recognizing our company and our partners. Um, we're so grateful for our partners and our store managers for all they did. Uh, the long hours, the additional safety, safety measures, the additional cleaning, the numerous policy changes, I'm sure you'll attest to. It seemed like there was three or four per day that came out for us. So um, just on behalf of Brookshire Grocery Company and all of our store employees and partners, we say thank you. of appeal for Josh Greenwalt, 5924 Wildcrest Street, Bossier City, Louisiana, for violation of City Ordinance Section 14, Vicious and Dangerous Dog. Good afternoon, Council. Mayor. On July 4th, our animal control officer received a call from Mr. Pipes, who lives at 2200 Middle Creek Boulevard 
stating his dogs were attacked by a pit bull who came across the street from 5924 Wildcrest. According to Mr. Pipe's statement, he, his son, and granddaughter were walking their three dogs while approaching the intersection of Middle Creek and Wildcrest. A pit bull charged across the street, went behind his husky, and bit her tail. They tried to grab the dog's collar but were unable to restrain it. Then the dog charged at their golden retriever but did not bite it. They again tried to restrain the dog and pushed it towards the street, but the dog got away, ran back across the street to his house where he was waiting for Mr. Greenwald. In Mr. Greenwald's statement, he, he um, acknowledges his dog was loose and outside of its backyard. According to the city ordinance, 1461, dangerous dog, dog shall mean any dog that when unprovoked shall be deemed a dangerous dog if it, number one, bites, injures, or inflicts a bite <clears throat> on a human being or domestic animal, either upon, public, either upon public property or those areas of private property that are unfenced and normally accessible to the public. And number two, chases or approaches a person upon the street, sidewalks, or public grounds in a terrorizing or menacing fashion or apparent attitude of attack. We believe that this case meets the requirements for deeming this dog dangerous. This is Mr. Pipes. He'd like to speak on his own behalf. I uh, don't think I have anything to add to the facts other than what you all uh, have in the report. Um, uh, uh, my wife and I do walk by uh, uh, the deputy's house uh, uh, daily, usually on the other side of the street. Um, uh, the fact of the matter is uh, his uh, dog was loose. My dogs were on leashes. Uh, the dog made a direct uh, hit on my husky's uh, rear end. Uh, you can judge from the pictures how bad she was bit. Um, I, I don't think I have anything else to add. Mr. Pipe. Thank you. What is your name and address oh, for the record, I'm please? I'm sorry. It's uh, James Michael Pipes. Uh, I live at 2200 Middle Creek Boulevard. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. This is Mr. Greenwald. Okay. My name is Josh Lee Greenwald. I stay at 5924 Wildcrest. Um, it started on uh, July 4th, as you can see probably in the report. I woke up about 12.45 in the afternoon after a long night out. I uh, let my dogs out like usual. I was going to go to my wife's parents' house to spend 4th of July night there. And whenever I let my dogs out, about 20 minutes after that, I opened the door to let them back in. Called for my female, and she didn't answer. My female is, her name's Sasha. She is a, according to the vet, a lab boxer mix. Um, Whenever I called for her, she didn't come, which is very strange. Uh, she's been trained for the past three years professionally. Uh, whenever she hears my command, she comes all the time. So I went into my backyard. Just whenever I saw Mr. Pipes across the street, and he yelled at me saying, hey, your dog just attacked my dog. So I went inside, put my shoes on, went around to where my gate is, and I noticed my gate was opened. At that point in time, it struck my mind. I have no idea how my gate's open. My gate is always secure and is never opened. Uh, so I went out, addressed Mr. Pipes, asked him if his dog was okay. He said he did not know that he would have to check on it. I noticed at that time he also was walking a dog that had a muzzle on it. He also had two other dogs with him. Uh, they were all standing up. Uh, whenever I asked him where my dog was, he pointed towards my house, went over there. His son was there, had my dog up against the door like this. She was waiting for me to go let her inside. I let her inside, put her in her kennel, went back outside, nobody was outside. I assumed they kept walking the dog. I assumed everything was okay. I went to address the matter. I noticed on my ring camera on July 3rd, two kids came to my house, same two kids that always come to my house asking for a ball that they kicked over my fence. They rang the doorbell for about I don't know, three or five minutes. Nobody answered. They went over my driveway, around to the side where my gate was, and then they went back to their house. I went to the house where the kids live at, addressed the parents. They walked in, asked a few questions. They said that it was one of their friends that went into my backyard through my gate, got the ball, did not secure the gate. 
that, that matter has been addressed. On, I think it was the fourth. I don't know what time they came by, but I wasn't home. Animal control came by my house. I wasn't home at the time whenever animal control came to my house on the 4th. I was out already at my in-law's house. On the 6th, they came to my house and I was, I was awake. And uh, see, I work nights on uh, patrol for Bozier Sheriff's Office. So whenever they come in the morning at 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning, I'm asleep and I didn't answer the door. So the 6th, they came by. They came by later in the afternoon. They finally got a statement from me. And the statement they have says, have my statement in the packet or not I do okay perfect basically what happens is what I just told you uh, I don't believe my dog was dangerous I don't believe that she was unprovoked uh, mr. pipes and his wife have walked their dogs by my fence uh, their dogs combined weight is probably around 160 170 pounds I don't believe one human being can control that much animal at a fence Whenever he walks his dogs or she walks their dogs next to my fence, they fight at my fence. My fence, if you have seen my, my yard, it's not a completely enclosed privacy fence. It's, I don't know, maybe an inch, inch and a half gap between each, each board. You got a picture of it? Okay, okay. Um, so whenever they walk the dogs by my fence, they fight. Uh, maybe a minute at a time. Thanksgiving last year, 2020, his dogs got loose from his yard, fought my dogs at my fence for, I would say, more than a minute. Okay. This is my wife's uncle, Troy Phillips. He owns All Dogs Unleashed in Shreveport. Uh, he was at my house at the time on Thanksgiving. Him and my wife had to go outside, get his dogs taken back to his house. They were not a threat towards them by any means. They weren't wearing a collar. Um, they were just fighting at my fence. Her gate was left open as well, twice. For the record, yeah, if yeah. the man's going to speak, he needs to state okay. his name and address for the record. You, yes, go, go to the mic right there. there yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, the name's Troy Phillips. The business is All Dogs Unleashed. The address is 1240 Shreveport Barksdale Highway, Suite 102. Thank you. Okay. Um, but on Thanksgiving, yes, we, myself and Haley, his wife, took their dogs over to them. The wife answered the phone, and their gate was open as well. I have been over at their property several different times, and she does walk the dogs along the fence line, and they fight as well. So if she feels there's a threat, why walk on that side of the fence when your house is on the other side, you know, and you know what happens, okay? And I have other things to say, too, but I just wanted to pertain to what he was just saying. Like, we did return the dogs, and it's happened a couple times as well. Um, my dog started training with Troy. Uh, he actually, before he started his business, took my dog to Dallas, where the main business is for All Dogs Unleashed, and he used her as a, uh, as a uh, training partner to learn how to train the dogs over there. Uh, since then, she's been trained professionally every day. She uses an e-collar. She listens to commands. She sits. She listens. She obeys. She waits. Uh, she's an ideal, perfect individual dog, in, in, my, in my opinion. Um, Sorry, I'm trying to find the narrative. I can address that. Here it is. Let's see, on the 6th, I believe, one of the agents came out and said he spoke with me and showed that the gate, I showed him that the gate was open. He said his neighbor's kids came into the backyard. According to the, Mr. Greenwald, the kids did not light the gate properly. Uh, Right here, it said, I informed Mr. Greenwald that we would be doing an investigation on the attack and that his dog would be, that his dog could be deemed dangerous. I don't believe that there was an investigation done. Um, according to the emails, I wrote my statement down on the 6th. I wrote
wrote my statement down on the 6th and provided animal control with my statement. On the 8th, Mr. Pipes emailed Jennifer Westerfield with the Bossier City Animal Control. He said, Jennifer, could you call me and let me know what is happening with my problem, please? Thanks, Mike. It's two days after I gave my uh, statement. The next day, Jennifer emailed him back and said, Hi, Mr. Pipes, we're currently going forward with deeming the dog dangerous. I need your formal statement on what happened. You can either email me your statement or come into the office and write a statement. Thank you. Mr. Pipes, later on that day, on the 9th, provided his statement in an email. So I guess what I'm getting at is I don't understand why there were, they would have an investigation done without a formal statement from Mr. Pipes. Uh, also, three days after my statement was provided. Also on the day of the attack, whenever I came back, I did not notice it at the time until I put my dog away and then got her back out later on that night. Sasha did not have any blood on her chest. She has a white chest. She has a tan dog, white chest, and white feet, okay, just like a boxer. So there was no blood on her chest. There was no blood on her mouth. There was nothing hanging from her teeth. Her teeth were completely clean. Uh, only other thing I can, and I'm not trying to make any assumptions, the only other thing I can think of is the other dog that had a muzzle on while he was walking. I don't understand why you would have a muzzle on your dog unless it's a dangerous dog. Also, the attack happened, supposedly the attack happened. I have my dog here on my ring camera at 1.02 p.m. Also, I have Mr. Pipe's son here on my ring camera at 1.15 p.m with my dog Sasha. According to the narrative, according to the email, I'm trying to find the time, I'm sorry. It's at the top. It's at the top. Top line. Yeah, two thirty yeah, uh, right here is son Joe. At around two thirty PM he was approached at the intersection of Middle Creek and Wildcrest with my dog. Came charging out of my backyard. Well obviously my dog was already detained at 1.15 p.m. At 1.28 p.m., I had already went to the neighbor's house with the kids, and he had come back to my house to address the situation that his friend, that his kid's friend had went to my backyard at 1.28 p.m. If y'all want to see this, I, can, I, have, I, could, I could hand this down if y'all want to see this. So if your dog... I'm just going to ask a crazy question. If your dog didn't bite Mr. Pipe's dog, but we got pictures of him, do you think he would really say that? Or that he would, it was your dog if he didn't do it? If your if, dog didn't bite his dog? If he has pictures of the bite? No, we have pictures of the bites. I'm just saying. Right. You don't think his dog, your dog, no, bit sir. his dog? No, sir. I do not. So. And I wasn't there, obviously, either. The only ones that were were himself. She wasn't with, from my understanding. Um, but I have seen fights. I've no dogs, known dogs that have been quarantined. When they don't know which dog did it, there was more than one dog on that walk. They had two others with them and the one with the, yeah, the, one two, one with the muzzle. Yeah. So they had three dogs total, correct? You had, you had four. You had four dogs. You dog. had four dogs there yourself. Four dogs out there. How many with you? Three, right? I had three. Leaders. That's right, I mean, three. Okay, so he had three. What's to say one of their dogs didn't turn on the other dog when a scuffle started? I'm not saying Sasha did or did not do it. I've seen cases where they couldn't prove it, and they've quarantined both dogs. You know, I mean, I've been bit by dogs, and I didn't know which one it was, and they've quarantined both dogs. Nobody can really say which one did it at that time. Dogs react when they react. As a dog trainer, and since I'm here real quick, I'll just mention it while I'm at the mic. Since this has happened, we've had Sasha at my facility several times with other dogs. There's been no issues with any. Mr. Greenwald has video on camera as well. I do at the office. Um, but we haven't seen anything toward people or other dogs. Not saying it can't happen. It can obviously happen with any dog at any time. But the proof to say which dog did it when you have four dogs involved is hard to say. That's, that's how I just feel on it. But I've used Sasha for demos to like show customers and stuff how she is and all that. There hasn't been an issue. Okay, three years of working with her and she still comes to our facility. Okay, um, she is a good dog. It's an unfortunate circumstance. Somebody opened the gate. The Greenwalds are responsible dog owners. 
they volunteered to pay for the vet bill. The vet bill was supposedly $750, now it's 800 and something dollars, each price is different, you know. Um, I'm sorry, Mr., what's your last name, I'm sorry? Pipes. Mr. Pipes, thank you. Um, Mr. Pipes did mention that he wasn't worried about, he's just worried about the safety of people and stuff, correct? They have put locks on their gates and stuff like that since then. And they'll know. put locks on his gate? Yes, sir, yes, I have locks his, on my you, gate. You didn't yes. have them on then? No, right? sir, okay. not then. No, so. I do now. Um, that, that's one of the issues that you probably see. Correct. Dale, uh, to wrap this thing up, do you have anything else you'd like to add to it? To it? No, no, sir. Uh, um, I mean, the simple fact was that his dog got out and it was eyewitness by Mr. Pipes and actually his son and granddaughter in a state that that dog bit their dog. And just to clarify something, what was said, y'all, did y'all do or did not do an investigation? Yes, they did an investigation. We got an initial statement from Mr. Pipes over the phone. We asked for his formal state, written statement before we made a judgment. Mr. President, may I ask? Sure. When you said, Mr. Grimwald, that the dogs at the fence fight, are you talking about a fence fight between the fences between the dogs or do they really fight? The fences between the dogs. Uh, whenever he walked his dogs by my fence, my dogs are in my backyard and they fight at the fence. At the fence? Yes, sir. Okay. They don't get touched. Okay. That's the, that's the corner of my house. I live on a corner. Okay. So this is their whole fence line and that's where the pipes will walk and their dogs will fight through that fence. Does, Even though they know their dogs fight there, they still continue. Does that include Sasha? Sasha's inside of Sasha's fence. inside the fence. I mean, is, is she doing the fence fighting as well? When well, of course. Whenever she, whenever okay. their dogs are attacking through the fence, yes. Okay. Okay. So that's that's what she does. There's a history she between reacts. the dogs. If she reacts. Yeah. Do. But they know that and they continue to keep, keep doing it. Keep on if, if I could ask a question, Dale, this is the first incident, correct? Yes. We have no report of the dogs getting out before. No one could. No one called in about their dogs being out before. So there's a lot of variables here, a lot of uh, vague uh, information. Um, but the, the, I have a, a dog, we did DNA tests, 75% lab, 25% boxer. Strong as an ox, okay. Uh, I love that dog, like you, like you love your dog. Uh, things happen. You know, and, and I know that if my dog got out and there was an incident, uh, I, if, I, if I were in that situation, uh, I, I, my son loves the dog, he lives in South Louisiana, I would get rid of my dog and, and give it to my son. Because if it happens again, and we've seen it could happen again, the dog gets put to sleep. And, uh, you know, it's unfortunate when you live in the city, you're, you're a responsible dog owner, but I know things happen. It, it, it does, but it, it, it doesn't mean that, that we can overlook something. Uh, so I, my, uh, I guess I, I'm just uh, relieved that this is the first action on this and that, uh, you know, if, if you keep the dog, then there's things that he has sure. to do. And, and, and that's it, an option. That I will say have. that he has come by and paid the fees and fines. Right. And, if, and if you decide to overturn it, then we will like, refund everything. I know everything. exactly what you mean about we refund fund. everything. Uh, you explain to my dog about. doesn't do it. I know what you're talking about. It's their dogs, you know. Uh, but when they, there's no fence, then, uh, you know, incidents happen. So I, I just, those are my comments. I just wanted to share that with you. Council, any other comments? <clears throat> Phyllis, would you, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Pike. Could I have one rebuttal? You can. Uh, uh, number one is uh, we no longer walk on his side of the street. We walk on the east side of the boulevard uh, because of an incident over a year ago where the dogs were at each other at the fence. So, therefore, we walk on our side. We do cross uh, uh, Middle Creek onto Wild Crest at the corner. Um, I also have a statement here from my son that he witnessed the dog bite, and it's signed by two people who witnessed him write it and sign it. If y'all would like to add that. Yeah, you 
you can uh, submit that to a, a clerk right there. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, folks, would you to uphold? Uh, the okay, so the, the, the what you'll need to do is you'll either vote to, I mean, make a motion to overturn animal control. You'd make no motion in animal control to stands. Okay. And he can appeal it to district court. Council, does anybody have a motion? So we're going to deem it dangerous. Please, and I know you will, Dale, explain to them uh, what happens if, if it does it again. That, that's, yes, right. that's the big part. And you'll explain to them about the district court yes. process? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Pipes? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Unfinished business. Adopt an ordinance authorizing Mayor Tommy Chandler to execute the attached agreement with NTB Associates, Inc. and appropriating $300,000 from the Walter O. Bigby Carriageway Fund for services to be provided in conjunction with said agreement. Final reading. So moved. Second. David, would you like to explain any of that? Yeah, this is uh, going forward um, with the new contractor, J.B. James, on the Walter O. Bigby Carriageway Phase 2 North. Um, we will continue to require the uh, services of NTB for ongoing construction issues with the contractor. So this is basically what I would consider a deposit, and we will draw against that as needed for NTB to provide clarification to the contractor, J.B. James. Council, any questions? Do we have any Questions from the audience? All right, Council, please cast your vote. I can find my arrow. Motion carries. Adopt an ordinance to appropriate $116,068 from the LDEQ SRF loan CS 2211-03-02 to be used to supplement the already appropriated $250,000 from ordinance number 36 of 2020, the Waller Avenue lift station, final reading. So move. Second. Ben, just as, <coughs> this is additional money at all, uh, for that lift station. I know they did a lot of work out there. <coughs> yes, sir. This is additional money and it's also reconciling all the project costs that were incurred on there. So it's more than just construction. There's construction and inspection and things like that. So there was an additional change order on the project for concrete work and cleaning up that area and then reconciling that whole uh, appropriation by the council. So we're done with that one. All yes, sir. Done. It's complete. Thank you, Ben. Council, any questions? Who had a question? Questions from, audience. Questions from the audience? <laughs> <laughs> Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt an ordinance to approve report of change order number one and number two for the LTRI, Louisiana Technical Research Institute, Bossier, with an increase in project cost of $80,055.85 from the 2016 sales tax bond issue. Final reading. So moved. Second. Council, any questions? Do we have any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. New business, introduce an ordinance to approve report of final change order for the Melrose extension to Plantation Drive project. First reading. So moved. Second. So we're completely done with Melrose now, huh? Any questions, Council? Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Introduce an ordinance to enlarge the limits and boundaries of the city of Bossier City by annexing approximately 1.111 acres of land located at 1755 Swan Lake Road Bossier City, Louisiana, 71111. It's for the Sterling Medical Bossier LLC. First reading. So moved. Second. Council, any questions? Any questions from the audience? Council, 
counsel please cast your vote motion carries and counsel that one will not come back before you till august the third due to a longer advertising requirement for those Introduce an ordinance to appropriate $400,000 to come from the Riverboat Gaming Capital Project Fund to be used towards expanding the parking lot at the Bossier City Medical, I mean, Municipal Complex, first reading. So moved. Second. Where's the expansion going to be at? <coughs> Doesn't matter. I can... <laughs> Out there? Somewhere out there. Yeah. So even today when I came to park, <laughs> um, it's for the main parking lot right here directly across the street. Um, and it's, you know, we got people parking in the grass before council meetings and yeah. things like that. So uh, it's preliminary, that cost estimate. We were a bit conservative with those numbers. We think once we get an engineering design on that and get everything out to bid, uh, we'll get we'll get more refined numbers on that parking lot. Is it going just straight back where the, yes, where the uh, old restaurant was? Correct. Okay. And we're going to tie in the, uh, there's a little walk, sidewalk back there for the library as well. Yeah. We're going to tie all that together. Okay. About how many spaces we're going to have? I knew you were going to ask me that. Uh, okay, no, that's okay. <laughs> we'll find that out next time. Yeah, I'm sorry. There should be a little diagram in your packet, but if not, um, I'll, I'll shoot that out to everybody. Ben, one thing I would like to add, if we can not go with the new um, compact parking places where you can't pull a pickup truck in, <laughs> it'd be nice to go back to the old days. <laughs> you, know, you can actually pull in and back out of a parking spot without hitting anybody. <laughs> it's interesting you mentioned that because I was we having a hard have, time parking. That parking there. lot can be designated for normal vehicles, and then well, we might could restripe that whole parking lot through there as part of the process. That might be a consideration, yes, sir. Any other questions? No, thank you, Ben. Thank you. Any questions from the council? Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Introduce an ordinance to fund improvements to the Shady Grove and Rome Street list stations at a cost of $464,000 to come from the LDEQ loan CS 221103-02 and the Sewer Contingency Fund, first reading. So moved. Second. Second. Council, any questions? Any questions from the audience? Just please state your name and your address. Brian Hammonds, 100 Rosemont, Bossier City. Um, I just have a question. Is this going to fix the problem that we're having in South Bossier with the lift stations, specifically in Shady Grove with um, all the torn up yards? I know you're having to reroute water, sewer down through ditches, everything like that um, in this area. Is this, this going to fix the problem? This so people can here. get back to normalcy. Yeah. Ben? Council, this particular project um, is not designed to specifically address every issue we've got in South Bossier. Um, there is an active project, a uh, several million dollar project going on down around Normand and Shady Grove. We call it Basin 25, BC 25. So there's been a lot of sewer rehabilitative work going on that's going to help. Um, you know, that system dates back many, many years and was never sized to handle um, all of that flow. It seems like as that subdivision was developed, it just kept extending and extending and extending. So we actually um, are researching right now. We have sewer model modelers looking at some of the more pressing what we call sanitary sewer overflow issues and considering adding another lift station right at the intersection of Normand and Shady Grove right there because that's the far end of that collection system and not taking all of that sewer further down and getting caught up with everything else but picking it up and pumping it directly to the wastewater plant. So we've got contracts on that are actively researching that. It's a problem. It's been a problem for a while. It, it, it exacerbates itself when we have all of this rain. The rain just filters into the ground and begins inundating um, that sewer system. So instead of just conveying sewer, we're conveying a lot of storm and water I, as well. I understand that. So I just, just wanted a little clarification. Yes, sir. We're looking at it really hard. Um, and uh, hopefully um, 
we'll, we'll have some good news to report to the council on some potential solutions for all of that. Okay. Thank this you. is going to help, but I don't think it, it's the silver bullet. Thank you, Ben. Ben, I just want to thank you for all your work on Shady Grove. We've been in contact a lot with yeah. the issues. <laughs> it's a war zone out there right now. Yeah, so, I lived in Shady yeah. Grove 12 years. Yeah. Uh, the sewer backed up in the street back then. Uh, but uh, I do appreciate the work that's being done. It's an enormous project, retrofitting sewer lines in an old subdivision. Well, there's a lot. You have sidewalk work going on, yeah. um, street panels being replaced, sewer projects. So there's a lot of work happening down there. I don't think there's many here. cities that would do this. Um, yeah. Well, it's a enormous no pain, project. no gain. So. And I appreciate it. I was down there yesterday. Thank and, you. Uh, ben, I, just see, I, I can meet uh, Let's speak for a few minutes. Sure. Because I got some things down there that have been happening the last few days and they talked to you about Okay. Yes, sir. Mr. President, if I may. Uh, ben, what is, the, what is the timeline again to wrap all of the current projects uh, that are going do on down there? I would say we're in the home stretch. You know, Mother Nature's just, I, I can't, right. I'm not going to put on record what I think that would be because <laughs> I can't predict what the weather's like. But, you know, when we get torrential downpours, just know that a project, every project in the city, when that happens, is delayed. Gotcha. Um, but they are making hay there. Um, you know, Lawler Constructions, the contractor there, they're a very uh, reputable firm doing a lot of good work. Um, I would give or take six weeks, okay. you know, and then it'll be under warranty and we'll have other things we got to work on there. But they're doing a lot of clean up and dress up right now. Thank you. Council, any questions? Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Public hearing concerning the city's application to the United States Department of Justice to participate in the Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistant Grant Program. So moved. Oh, public hearing. Yeah. Um, where's the chief at? He was there. Oh, did you want to get talk about that, chief? Thank you. Just. For the new guys, he'll explain. We did this is something we do every year, so sure. not the new guys. I mean, the new councilman and the new mayor. I'm sorry, <laughs> Mr. President, Councilman, Mr. Mayor. The Bird City Police Department has applied for this federal grant since 2010. In 2010, our agency received $161,000. However, the award for 2021 is $43,483, which will be split between us and the Bossier Parish Sheriff's Office. The Bowser City Police Department will receive $21,741.50 to be used for our annual armed robbery task force as well as funding our additional uh, legal update and extra patrol at the Louisiana Boardwalk as well as conducting follow-up investigations with sex offenders. This additional funding does not cost our taxpayers a dime. It's a federal grant which may be used for local initiatives, technical assistance training, personnel equipment, supplies and contractual support as well as information systems for law enforcement. We feel this grant is served better by placing additional officers on the street during the holiday season to augment our patrol divisions as well as act as a deterrent to those who wish to prey on our local businesses as well as our citizens during the holidays. Any questions? Any questions, Council? Uh, no, I'd just like to say uh, thank you for continuing to apply with this. Um, keeping businesses and residents safe during the holiday season is why people shop here um, and live here in Bossier City. So uh, thank you for uh, applying for this again and keeping this going. Thank you each and every yeah. one of you for your support for the police department. We certainly appreciate it and the men and women, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Chief, stay right there for a minute. Uh, yes, sir. Is, this is a public hearing, so anybody that'd like to get up and speak on this, uh, you, this is the time to do it. So we open the public hearing. Seeing there's no one to speak, we're going to close the public hearing. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, Chris. Adopt a resolution endorsing the city's application to the United States Department of Justice to participate in the Edward Bryan Memorial Justice Assistant Grant Program. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Any questions, Council? Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. And somebody's got a cell phone going off, so. Motion carries. Adopt a resolution repealing resolution number 57 of 2021 and reenacting a resolution declaring a moratorium on any purchases of city vehicles, whether budgeted or not, 
with the exception of vehicles to maintain fire, police, and EMS operations until legislation can be adopted to allow for a policy for said purchases. So moved. Second. Any questions, Council? Uh, one, one quick question. Um, so un until legislation can be adopted, or, um, are we going to have a... Could we, a excuse me, remind people to please put their phones on silent? Excuse me, Mr. Smith. I, oh, no, yes. I just wanted you to have the floor uninterrupted. So, thank you, Marshall. Uh, all right. Ahead, so, please. my question is: uh, is Are we going to have a committee that's going to work together to adopt um, this legislation? Uh, what's What's this process going to look like? Uh, I've talked to Mr. Darby. Uh, he's probably going to head up, and uh, we can talk afterwards. Uh, there will be two people on it just to start to get things rolling okay you know, uh, again just to get you involved in some things like that uh, but we'll, we'll probably start that this week or early next week okay any questions other questions from the council any questions from the audience Good afternoon. My name is Kerry Chandler. My address is 2924 Heather Lane here in Bossier. And my question about number seven, now, probably a twofold question. What is resolution number 57? That's what we did initially. Uh, we just, we didn't, I didn't think about adding an emergency uh, exception for the fire and police for emergency stuff only. You know, everything else will still come to us for, uh, be approved. If they need something in an emergency, whether it's a truck or, or whatever, they can go ahead and buy it. The two okay. chiefs. Okay. All right. Thank you. We just wanted to clarify that uh, so they would have the money available. Any other questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt a resolution nominating for confirmation by the Bossier City Council, Angela Williamson as Director of Finance. So First and final reading. So moved. Second. Is, uh, is she here, Tom? Yes, sir. Where's she at? Oh, there she is. Would you like to come <laughs> up, Ms. Angela, and say a few words? just want to thank you, Mayor Chandler, and thank the city council I'm looking forward to working with all of you and everyone here at the city of Bossier I know everyone here ha wants what's best for the city and is dedicated to ensuring the city continues to grow and prosper and I'm honored to have the opportunity to contribute to those goals thank you well, we're honored to have you uh, have you have y'all got have you got a start date the 26th I just wanted to add, we, uh, Councilman Williams and I and the mayor met with Angela and I was duly impressed and you come with high regards and recommendations throughout the community. So we look forward to having you as part of the team. Thank Welcome. You. Thank you. And you have some good people working up there too, like we said. In, in yes, I've heard good things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ms. Williamson, did they uh, tell you that the budget process started in 30 days? <laughs> 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 yes, Are you they're, they're already working on it. So. <laughs> good, good. Council, any other questions? Mayor? I want y'all to vote her in before I get to talk. Yeah, I ain't vote her in. <laughs> She's going to get voted in. Okay. You go ahead talk. No, I want to thank all the council for, for you know, approving my appointment. She is, I've talked to her many, many times over the past months and stuff like that, and she is really going to be a, a blessing to us and help out Molly and all of them up, upstairs. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Council, Council, any other questions? Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Thank you, Angela. Motion carries. Thanks. Adopt a resolution reappointing Bob Brown for confirmation by the Bossier City Council as Director of Community Development. First and final reading. So moved. Second. 
Council, any questions? Any questions from the audience? Yes, that one. Bob, anything you'd like to say or? <laughs> Not with me, I'm sure. <laughs> thank you, Bob. Mayor? Oh, thank you, Bob, for all you've done, and uh, hope we can do this more, more down the road, too. And thank you for all you do for the city. Thank you very much. Council, please cast your vote. Audience. Oh, I thought I did that. Anything from the audience? You'd like to say anything? Just making sure. Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt a resolution reappointing Rodney Orr for confirmation by the Bossier City Council as Director of Fleet Services. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Rodney, you like to say anything? Yeah. <laughs> Getting skinny there, Rodney. Thank Brad, my campaign manager. Thank you all very much. <laughs> you needed one, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Council, any questions? <laughs> Mayor, you like it? That was that good, one? Rodney. Yeah. <laughs> that, will, that will go down in history. <laughs> Short and sweet. Great huh? speech. <laughs> any questions from the audience? Thank you, Mr. Orr. I appreciate you. Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt a resolution authorizing the hiring of one fire communications employee and the promotion of one fire communications employee to replace one position due to retirement. First and final reading. So moved. Second. <coughs> Council, any questions? Any questions from the audience? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt a resolution reappointing John Allen Tomasek the third for confirmation of the Bossier City Council as Director of Human Resources. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Uh, council, any questions? Where is it? Is he here? Oh, there. Would you like to come up and say anything? I just thank y'all for the opportunity. Wait a minute. You got to come up here for Rodney. <laughs> <laughs> we want to hear your speech next, brother. <laughs> yeah. My speech definitely is not as good as Rodney's, uh, but thank y'all. Thank y'all for the opportunity in the uh, past six years. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Did we ask the audience? If we didn't, we'll do it again. Any questions from the audience? Mayor? I just, I just thanked him. I, I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Council, please catch thank you, Motion carries. Adopt a resolution authorizing the hiring of a part-time property standards clerk to replace the position due to a resignation. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Council, any questions? Any questions from the audience? Kerry Chandler, 2924 Heather Lane. Um, I'm dealing with the property standards office about a piece of property that's uh, on, on, it's not on my street. My street is a little dead end street, but on Clover, Cloverdale. Um, and it's a, it's a real eyesore because I have to look at it going into my neighborhood and coming out of my neighborhood. And that address is 3101 Cloverdale Place. And I've talked with, uh, Mr. Smith about it. I had a conversation with him uh, last Thursday over it, and I've talked with the, uh, the lady, I think her name is Gina, that runs the property standards office, and she seemed to get the ball rolling, but right now I'm not getting any feedback from her office. I've left three, three uh, voicemails about this piece of property, and I know one of the things that Mayor Chandler said he wanted to do when he came is to make our city look presentable, and I'd like to hold you, hold you to that, uh, Mayor. And I do realize that I don't know whether this office is a, uh, 
is a, a reactive office or a proactive office. So I, it was, it was not being manned, manned very well, but, but there, it's not, not just my neighborhood. You can drive up and down Shed Road and you can see where the, where the property standards are uh, not doing well. You know, so uh, if, if, the, if the council could uh, look into this uh, a little more deeply and uh, maybe allocate some more money and be, be proactive with, with, this, with these issues, I would appreciate it from a, from a property owner because it detracts uh, no, no, matter, no matter what I do to my property, no matter how many dollars I spend on it, but the first thing you see is grass, waist high, limbs down, hedges 25 feet up in the air. It doesn't do any good, you know, I'm, I seem like I'm just wasting my money. As a matter of order, Mr. President, do you speak to the item on the agenda? I realize the importance of what you're saying, sir, and we can take the name and address and the mayor and the council can address it. Okay. But we have to speak to what's on the agenda at the appropriate okay. time. Thank, Thank you. you much. Have a great yes, sir. Day. But it is noted. <clears throat> council, any, any questions about hiring this part-time person? Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Approve report of change order for the Tinsley Park expansion project with an increase of 31 days. So moved. Second. Ben? I know we had this little meeting the other day. How, how many did they ask for? Is this the second quarter? Or no, sir. This was just. This is only the first quarter. Oh, still the first quarter? What yeah. Happened? We couldn't come to conclusion on the second quarter, so we didn't. We have not formalized that. Okay. Currently, the city's legal department's looking over there. So I think uh, I remember the days on the first one, first quarter. So I think I remember the days they asked yeah, for the first the, quarter. Yeah, it's 31 days. Well, they asked for a lot more than 31 yeah. days in the first quarter. We, we came to, we landed on 31, you know, just looking at all the information we had. And I know Chris called me yesterday. Just, I just try to get him up to date, you know, of what's going on and the deals, the things we're dealing with out there. And uh, Chris, feel free. Yeah, I'm at, I guess my, my only concern is we're 200 some odd days behind schedule already. We it's are 31. not quite that many behind, but uh, maybe from the original from the original, from the project, original date of yeah. completion. But even with we, that, we're about 90 days behind schedule yeah. based on work completed to date and the currently approved time, additional time for that project. And we feel confident that 30, given 31 more days is going to kind of jumpstart the process. They're going to be working weekends. They're going to be I'm, trying to finish this project. I quickly. feel confident that they were due 31 weather delays. It was a rainy first quarter. Now we like so we talk about with them in our meetings yeah. we have with them. You know, uh, right. like I said, they were, not to get in too much, but they asked for a lot more. Mr. Yeah. President, may I ask? What percentage of the project is completed to date? You, do you have they a They are, it's in your little packet there. I'll have a slide on the project, but they are to date. Uh, we are 73% complete and 88% of the construction time has elapsed. Mm -hmm. So even with second quarter, it might go from 88 to 85, there's still gonna be uh, based on that comparison behind. And that's related to weather mostly, not manpower. I didn't say that. <laughs> okay. So it's a combination of both maybe? Yes, sir. I believe so. Okay. And has there been any prompting on the part of the city? Yes. Monetarily or just verbally? Uh, we've been issuing letters, emails, uh, we meet every week, every other week on the project to make sure that we're keeping things moving on, on task and on schedule. We don't do that on any other project in the city. So it's very intense, a lot of moving parts. It's a big project. Mm -hmm. Um, so from, from my vantage point, 
as much pressure as the city could put on the contractor we've been pressing and um, they are responding mm -hmm. you know the project moving along it, it it's starting to take shape some of the more larger visible aesthetic you know milestone pieces of the puzzle are coming together out there um, but there's just a lot of little items you know it's quite a number of ball fields it's a very sophisticated intense project and uh, we want to make sure on behalf of the city of Bossier that when the contractors complete and they bequeath that park over to the city that you know Parks and Rec is proud of of what they've got out there and that everything functions um, in accordance with its intended purpose so so being behind as they are does that mean that we can't have the sporting activities that may have been scheduled for this season yes okay yeah the current plan right now um, is we're we've got a full court press on the existing fields mm -hmm. um, they're getting close to being done mm -hmm. um, you know our our pressure throughout the last several months is try to get that part of the park as a partial substantial completion mm -hmm and allow Parks and Rec to take over ownership of that once it's you know, capable of being used for its intended purpose and at least have half the park open for use. Um, so the, the current press is to get that done in August. Okay. There, there was some pretty bad hiccups and uh, just to, not to get in too deep, right. we did have our attorney at the last meeting, so that should tell you something. Yeah, and to that point, I just confirm with Mr. Jacobs that a letter has been sent by our city attorney. So we're going through the proper channels of navigating, and I'll keep my words in <laughs> general terms, nav navigating through the legal system in the correct uh, fashion and manners. So that's the, that's the big boot. Okay. Any other questions? Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. All right, we got some reports by the man at the podium. They're going to just stay up here. Um, the one, the first item there, update on underground pipe issues. I handed out, you guys should have in front of you just a little sheet, sort of looks like this. It doesn't sort of look like this, it looks like this. <laughs> I did get confirmation, um, Chris, on the BC25 and Shady Grove, they're doing a final walkthrough on July 27th. Okay. So pending punch list items and things like that, the project will be substantially complete shortly thereafter. So. They're closer than I thought. Okay, very good. Um, so, you know, just don't really want to bore you, but I, I felt like it was important to put some context to the particular underground issue we're having here at Airline and Murphy Street. Um, one thing we've noticed that, you know, the Red River is now in, in a pretty steady decline. Um, it's been doing that since early June, and coincidentally, um, as the river elevations have started to decline, um, this particular area and other areas, um, we've seen some uh, shifting of the soil, you know, uh, pavements and things subsiding along with that. You know, there's a technical term for that. I'm not a geotechnical engineer, but around these parts we call it running sand. So as the river comes up, you know, the water goes one way, and as the river goes down, the water starts booming another way, and that action creates some weird unforeseen subsurface anomalies. So on June 5th, we were notified by DOTD that they observed a void underneath Airline Drive near Murphy Street. Um, originally, we believed this to be due to a failure in the storm drain pipe that was in that location uh, because it had sunk and a lot of sand and debris had gotten into that line. Contractor came out under warranty that was Wicker Construction and repaired the storm drain line. And less than a couple weeks later, um, we got another call from DOTD indicating that they were observing continued settlement in that area. So we pressed the pause button, um, started really digesting what was going on, um, engaged a geotechnical engineering firm, Artiman and Associates, um, had their senior engineer, Mark Woodard, come out with us, and we walked that area um, on July 8th to start developing some corrective measures. 
And while we're out there looking at that area, we still have concerns from that area all the way down to Barksdale Boulevard, wanting to make sure that we get a hard look at what's going on in that corridor. We even did some research here in the engineering office, and this has been ongoing for decades and decades and decades in that area. So on July 12th, after meeting with the geotechnical engineer and in coordination with DOTD, we had Wicker Construction come back and place sand backfill. So we took out the concrete panels, filled that hole in with sand, and that was for two purposes. One, to make it safe. A car can't fall off into the hole, nor can a pedestrian. But the other was to prematurely load that area with a heavy fill material. So we put that load on. We've got monitoring points in there, and we're going out with GPS equipment regularly and, and determining if we're getting any subsidence. And I wasn't able to collect you know, any, any detailed information on that prior to this meeting, but visually we have not observed any additional settlement out there. So I can provide more information once I have that in hand. The geotechs will be out on the 27th. You'll see some large soil boring rigs. We're going to take three borings, one there at that location, and two, I call it further south, but I think in that area it's west, you know, so further west towards the river, um, and really get a look at what's going on. Those are going to be deep soil borings to really understand what's happening in the strata there. So one thing I included in your packet, this is not singled out just for Bossier City. Bossier Parish has been dealing with this in several of their areas of oversight. Um, they have a standard detail, and I just put it in that packet. We've been working with them to you know, get some, some ideas as to how to address this. We're not saying that's going to be the end-all, be-all way. We want to make sure that we do it properly. Um, but the parish is taking uh, examples from South Louisiana where they have more perched water, you know, uglier soils, you know, swelling, fat clays, and things like that. And um, they actually put in a subsurface piling system to support those structures. So that's a pretty conservative design, and that may, in fact, be what we need. Um, but that's an example of, of how to approach that. So it's ongoing. You've probably seen all of the enhanced traffic control measures and things like that. So we're pushing that to get some, get some closure. Um, and, and get some good uh, information in so that we can correct the problem, not see that happen anymore in the future. Hope so. Yeah, no hope. Hope is not a course. Do we of have action. any? Do we have Sorry. any uh, areas like that where we've put pilings in in this we, area? Uh, pilings like this, no. Um, one of Bozier City's standard details, we put pilings under manholes. Um, you know, it's it's uncommon but it happens where we have poor soils and we don't want those manholes to sink we'll drill piles and set the manholes on top of those piles um, we had uh, I say the city has a standard detail for poor soils where we build up a pretty thick aggregate foundation that that's underneath the pipe and then we go from there and a matter of fact that's what we used in this particular instance so there's theories out of there well if we used all of that why is it happening the best synopsis that, that I've gotten, now that hasn't been supported by any data from the soil borings, is the old line, when we excavated everything out to make this repair back in, you know, before February, it was complete in February, had sunk so deep um, that it was the top of the pipe was below the required invert to connect those manholes together. It was encased in concrete and impossible to get out of the ground. So we shored everything up, benched on top of that, set our new pipe in, and, and compacted everything back. And there's some concern that that action led to, you know, exacerbating those, those pumping soils, and it didn't rear its head until we started getting, you know, the water in and out of that location. So that's just a theory that hasn't been proved. Um, but it, those heavier loads, you know, when you get into a weak, soil um, is are potentially what caused a problem. We went back, we took soil uh, borings when that project was done, and there was a fine strata, a small strata in there was pretty weak, but the remaining soils above and below that pretty strong, but we didn't go, you know, 70 feet deep for that, that bore. Um, so we're, we're going to be looking at what's happening 
deep in that area that may be causing this problem because that main there is uh, almost 18 feet deep in the ground. So it's, it's complicated. Any other questions on that? Thank you. Finance Department monthly finance report for month ending June 2021. Good afternoon, Council. You have before you the financials for the month ended June 30th, 2021. The first page is the revenue report. We are currently running 119% to budget. Gaming revenue is still doing extremely well and is holding steady for the third month in a row. Sales tax is also doing well, up 19.9% compared to June of 2020. The month-to-month -month comparison is still reflecting COVID from last year, so the 2021 figures are still uh, significantly higher. Page two is the expense report. We are currently running 9% under budget. The alternative fuel stations are notably over budget, but so is the revenue at 127%. Page three is the sales tax comparative report. As previously stated, sales tax revenue is up 19.9% compared to this time last year. This comparison is the tail end of the COVID shutdown in 2020, so the 2021 numbers are still higher. The last page is the Manning report. We are up eight employees from last month. The total employees as of the end of June is 672. We are currently 22 employees below the budgeted uh, total for 2021 of 694. Are there any questions? How, what are we doing on water and sewer? Uh, we're doing- ben, Did he do that last month? Mm -mm. You did? No, I didn't. I, I think Ben was not here last. I don't think he gave one last month. <laughs> I'll wait in the suspense. I, I don't have a, an answer for you right now. I've, I've just got the June financials the, like yesterday um, or Friday, so I'm, yeah, I'm still fine. running those no numbers. Worries. I just wanted I'll, I'll make sure to report to the council yeah, on all that. Whatever. You know, Selling if you need water, additional right? assistance or whatever, but I, I, I want to make sure we stay yes, sir. on top of everything monthly. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. All right. Ben, I guess you're next, huh? What do you sit down for? <laughs> Got a break. Musical chairs here. Hot potato. Okay, Month monthly engineering report. Currently, um, we've got $137 million in ongoing design and construction projects. 128 million of that is currently under construction. Six projects in the design or bid phase, 20 projects under construction, and seven subdivisions in or nearing the, const the construction phase. So Walter O'Bigby Carriageway is complete, less uh, one particular item, and that is a gate. And everybody talks about COVID and blah, blah, blah. Once we get the uh, gate that's for Edwards Street installed, we will close that project out. Swan Lake Road, um, they are currently 86% complete based on the pay apps that have been submitted. If you've been out there, um, they look, in, in, for all intents and purposes, complete, less some final cleanup. Uh, we're working on some striping uh, challenges, shall I say, at the intersection of Matakalat and Swan Lake. I've got some feedback from the design professional of record this evening, uh, working with the uh, construction management firm, uh, Beast Engineering, to render a final decision on what we need to do at that intersection, complete that work, and close this project out. Melrose Drive Extension, that project is complete. This will probably be the last slide you see on this. Citizens Bank Drive, again, that project is uh, complete. <clears throat> Coleman Street, um, they have uh, geared up and are blowing and going now on what we would call the second phase of that work. 
Um, some of that being storm related. We were also working with utility companies, still uh, working with uh, the utility companies to get some of the older power and telephone and uh, cable lines out of the way. Um, the only thing we have left there, uh, Mr. President, is the removal of a guy wire. Everything else has been pulled and they've they got, been- They got the poles out too? I yes, sir, they did. that's going to, but I don't know if they, they did. did. Um, so they've been coordinating with especially Traco out there and uh, hopefully we'll get some good weather and get this project done. <clears throat> Highway 71 streetscape project, that was a little ahead of schedule. They're 80% complete with 74% of the time elapsed. It's looking good out there. Ben, if we could get that on the grass mowing schedule. The, the okay. Grass is three feet tall. Those so trees got beautiful sidewalk, but we have tall grass. Those trees got sprinklers on them? They it, it do, might not be actually. In the usual rotation because it's a new sidewalk. No, and I, I don't know. I'll, I'll look into it, but right now that project site is the contractor's project site. So my thinking is we get them to cut the grass while they're out there and clean it up. That might not be the correct interpretation, but right now that's what I'm thinking. Hey, if they do it, that'd be good thinking, huh? Yeah, they need to, they need to clean that area up. But they're close. Tinsley Athletic Ball Fields, we've talked about this. Um, I don't know that we need a rehash, but 73% complete, 88% uh, time elapsed, 95 days behind. Um, that gives you a good picture there, though, of the new concession building, um, kind of the gateway sign going into the facility. You can see you know, the new backstop and dugouts and things like that behind that picture. So it is starting to look good out there. They're making progress. Clifford Almond Park restrooms a little behind, um, but taking shape. They've got block coming up. Uh, Public Service Commission lighting project, specifically Berkshire Grocery Arena, is really the only uh, component of that project that's left to complete. And we've been working with the Public Service Commission to recoup um, their portion, that 350000 portion of the grant funds that the city received. Um, we're going, you'll be seeing uh, next council meeting a change order request to extend and do a little more uh, lighting improvement out there. So we've been able to stretch those dollars a long way. If you haven't been out there, it looks, looks really good. Citywide street improvement projects. This is, you know, one of the major focuses of the engineering department right now. All phases of construction of, of this project are under construction. That's including the city citywide sidewalks. We're seeing a lot of, of uh, I want to say windfall, but as we've been in those projects, we're, we're learning that the subsurface conditions um, aren't as bad as we had planned for. Uh, we were pretty conservative with our plan, so therefore the pricing is coming back to the city and allowing us to do more work um, in these districts. We were out in Stonebridge last week and this week looking at some additional work out there. That subdivision's over 20 years old. Um, we've been doing the same in some of the other districts. So um, as we get requests that come into the engineering department for various areas, we include those, prioritize those, and, and try to get that work completed um, on the streets. Did, did we, and you can say yeah or nay, I know it's a big thing. Did we ever figure out what we're gonna do with Michael Street? I need to visit with you and Councilman Darby on that. That's on my list. I know what I wanna do, but you're gonna need Mr. Darby involved money, in that. Oh no. <laughs> can't do it. Can't do so it. just for the rest of the council, Michael Street is in poor condition, but it also has drainage problems. Um, we've got a what we believe to be a excellent number from the contractor out there working to improve that. It will take your district um, a little bit more money out of, out of your district to complete that. But we believe just to go in and do the pavement only and not address the drainage there wouldn't be the right decision. So um, we've got some ideas. We'll, we'll get with y'all. I can visit with y'all after the meeting if you'd like. I know the contract's humping on them roads, though. They're not going to They them. are, and I think all the roads in Darby's district are complete, at least the ones we had as priority one. Um, so that's done. They're, they're anxious to get on Michael Street. And we're holding them at bay until we can come to a final decision there. 
Any other questions on the street program? So just kind of a snapshot of work being done there. Private development, uh, got a lot of that going on. St. Charles Court, Unit 9, Duckwater Landing, Unit 1. Um, that particular project, Duckwater Landing, is in an unusual uh, lack of electricity mode there. So they've got a lift station there. A lot of the infrastructure has been put in. Uh, we've been working with the developer on that to come up with some alternative solutions until uh, the power company can come in. But you know, when they need to issue certificate of occupancies for their, those homes, we need to make sure that there's ways of providing services to those customers. Golden Meadows Village, uh, unit number two. Redwood Place, unit number 12, Enclave, uh, number three, Estates, number four, and Retreat, number five. That's down in the preserve. Um, retreat number four, and then uh, Village at Tiburon, unit number 15. And that one's about done. Um, we're working on all of the testing of the water main out there. And I'm sure that that doesn't even scratch the surface for the need for residential in our area. Project out to bid or in design. Um, Highway 71 lighting, phase two. Um, working with the engineer right now. Um, to make sure we get the right fixture selection. Uh, the South Bossier miscellaneous capital improvements, those are in design. Uh, Highway 71 left turn lane at Golden Meadows subdivision. Um, we'll be getting an engineer to work on the stages of study and design, El Pronto. Um, same with the Tinsley drainage basins improvements. That was a project that the council recently approved and we're gonna uh, engage an engineering firm to help resolve those problems. Uh, just honorable mentions, uh, urban systems, they presented to the council back on the 1st and additional data will be collected once school traffic normalizes per DOTD requirements, if y'all recall. Um, we've got some coordination going on right now with the Bossier Parish Police Jury and DOTD, looking at left turn lane extensions for access to I-220 at Benton Road, um, working on the traffic signalization software upgrades, uh, we've got uh, Kansas City Southern. I think that's an important, I know that's created a lot of log jams there on Hamilton Road. They are to be complete and open that road by August 2nd. So get them out of there and get that north-south route opened up. Um, and then uh, we had gotten approval uh, for the installation of the left turn signal at Airline Drive and Green Acres Boulevard going on to Innovation Drive. There were some issues there. That signal is installed and working. So thank you all for that. And then property standards, I did take that note. I'll be getting with him later on that particular address, but they're blowing and going. You know, Mr. Rogers is out for a couple of days, right? I didn't know that. I, I talked to him a while ago. He had to go get tested for, for COVID. Okay. I'll get with you on some of that. That's all I've got. Any questions from the council? How are we doing? on our pilot program as far as increasing the integrity of the streets and participating with the contractors? You remember we had talked about that? Oh, um, it's going well. Uh, if you want to explain, since so the, we have the new council and new administration, uh, we, something we initiated, what, a year ago or so? Yes, sir. So some of the areas where we're doing pavement improvements the city's been back there multiple times, and, and we would contend that those pavements never really reach their, their intended service life. So Bossier City has a standard pavement design, kind of a one-size-fits-all, and in most cases that works fine, but when you get into areas where we've got boulevards, you've got heavy cement trucks and trash trucks and things rolling through there, um, there are places where the pavements, uh, Tiburon being one, um, example just coming to mind there are plenty of others where those pavements did not withstand you know the test of time and so we are working um, to implement a more conservative design in those heavier trafficked areas based on good geotechnical engineering work and in concert with the engineers developing those subdivisions to make sure that we get pavements that um, won't need to be repaired once the city takes ownership of those which is you know they go in and 
after two years, they become the cities. Well, they look brand new after two years. And then by some of these places at the five-year mark, we're performing pretty expensive repairs. So one place we, we put in particular, just as a matter of note, was down on the preserve. Um, there, the parkway entrance. Um, we, we didn't feel as though that entrance got the analysis it really needed. We worked with the developers, um, contributed, the city did, 50% um, of the differential in cost to beef up that pavement, which equated to less than four grand. But we think over time that probably will recoup itself to the tune of 400 grand. You know, so it's, it's a good thing for both you know, the citizens and the cities being uh, you know, friendly, if you will, to the development community that you know, they've planned these developments and their capital resources based on that typical standard. Um, so the city saying, well, maybe to stave off some increased expense way down the line, what would it take to get these pavements a little bit more uh, thicker uh, for that particular Can condition. We participate. Yes, sir. So I don't know of any community that does that. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Council, any questions about anything today? Mr. President, I just want to appreciate our city clerk for assisting us in that recognition of those who provide services to the city during the pandemic. The new council members might recognize that to have someone of her caliber to assist is always uh, makes us look good, makes everything easier, mm -hmm. and she does a great job always. And I want to thank her. She's a one-man band. <laughs> she is a one-man band. That's right. <laughs> Anything else, Mayor? No, sir. Any comments? This is comment time, Mayor. Comment time. Comment. I don't I have none right now. Oh, that's <laughs> unusual. <laughs> anyway, uh, I guess uh, that's it. Meeting adjourned.